Hero Club presents Los Inglobanables de Tokusatsu. Welcome to Los Inglobanables de Tokusatsu, episode 29. I am one of your hosts, Wheelchair21, and joining me tonight is actually Project RDM, because we lost the janitor Joker. Uh, we wish him well in his future travels in the afterlife. Uh, did somebody find pennies to put in his eyes? Uh, no, I don't know. Uh, we know he's got his job, and that means he'll have less time to be with us, meaning either it's like the green candle syndrome, or his powers are completely gone altogether. We'll find out in uh, oncoming episodes. I, I, I am sure of that, even though technically we still have to pre-plan and pre-record episode 30, since we did guarantee and promise there would be a 30th episode with me and Mucha talking about a certain Sentai movie that we said we would re-review after we gave it a few re-watchings. Which one is it exactly? Uh, we are going to be re-reviewing the Space Squad movies, now that it's been like a few months since it's been out, parts 1 and 2, you know, episode 0, and the actual film itself. So... Nevertheless, on our episode today for the Lit List, we're going to be talking about some of the more recent news that's appeared. Some of this is premium Bandai stuff, some of this is actually New York Comic Con stuff, and some of this is just crazy shit that's going on. So first off, let's go to our freaking premium Bandai stuff. Let's start it off right there, and then we'll have our discussion topic, which will be about toy collecting and our collections specifically. We have Super Mini Pla King Brachion as a premium web shop exclusive, it is retailing for, or I should say, is going to be sold for 12,960 yen, and it's set to release in February 2018. The crazy thing about this mecha is that for a mini plaza, it's going to feature a motorized gimmick that uses two AA batteries to power it. It will still be able to transform into its parts to become like the Carrier Zor Titanus when you fuse it with Daijujin and Dragon Seasar to become Ultimate Daijujin. It is a little bit more different than the original mold, having a more sturdier back plate to keep it standing up inside when it's rolling along your table or surface. So it most likely may not be able to fit other mini plaws in there due to its one signature kind of back plate for its throne. Now, other than that, being a web shop exclusive, it is not confirmed yet if Blue Fantomashi will be distributing it to North America like they already have done the Daijujin and Dragon Caesar at this time, which actually got an early release at New York Comic Con and is currently stocking at hobby stores like Big Bad Toy Store. Next up, we also got the Premium Bandai Deluxe Gash Hat Gear Duel, another, which is going to be featured in another ending, Para DX and Poppy. The, and it's set to release in March 2018. It is 3,024 yen. Now, the crazy thing about this Gasha is it's just a black version, which will allow, most likely, Pardo to gain another form. However, some scans show he's actually going to fight this form in the upcoming film. Not much is known further about it, so watch uh, for scans and for the actual movie to learn more about this specific Gasha. Nevertheless, it's for like 3,000 yen, which is almost close to the original retail price of the basic Gash Hat Gear Duel. But this one is premium Bandai and black and white. It is, you know, Hero Club moniker colors, you know, or gimmick colors. Now, this next item from P Bandai actually is shocking. It is the Ultra Replica Esplendor and Agulator set from Ultraman Gaia. The Esplendor was Gaia's henchman device, the Agulator is Agul's. Now, the cool thing about it is both will be in this set for 9,936 yen, which is roughly around $100. It will feature LED lights, sounds, as well as sound bites of the actual Ultras, like, you know, shouts, and their actual signature attacks, such as Gaia's Photon Edge, his Quantum Stream, and Agul's Ag Agul Blade and Photon Crusher. This is a great thing due to the fact that the original deluxe toys individually go for $60 to $80 or even more on the secondary market, whether they're in box or out of box. So for $100, getting almost like Tomashi Labs kind of quality stuff with a pedestal stand and more features is remarkable. Project, what are your thoughts on the premium Bandai stuff that is currently announced out of these three announcements? Well, the King Brachion looks pretty sweet. Uh, I'm guessing these are stickers that they put on? The gold? What's it called? Is, it already pre, what's it, is that pre-put on? How's Since that this work? is Premium Bandai, I think that at least 
half of it's going to be stickers. The other half is going to be, like, premium pre-painted, like, areas that you actually still assemble into the kit. Because there are some model uh, models that are from Premium Bandai that have parts pre-painted by the company. So when you put it in, it doesn't require you to sticker them. It would be like when you have the Daijujin or Dragon Caesar, the actual Daijujin and Go Ryujin faces are actually pre-painted and do not require stickers. So this might have some of those elements into the overall base of the Brachion body. Because I can't tell what's stickers and what's actual details. Because I'm looking at the images on Hero Club, and like by scale-wise, it looks fucking awesome. Yeah, it's a lot bigger than I in thought it would be, and because of the motor gimmick, I can understand why. And the pricing. The pricing is a little much for a steep for me for a mini flaw, but I guess because it's King Brachion and the, the fact that it has the, bat- the moving gimmick, uh, I think it's worth it. I, I think it's all right, but I'm not into mini flaws, though, so thanks. Yeah, I, I, these are the two things I said. For $120, you could get the Legacy Brachion for that price, the Legacy Titanus for that goddamn price. On top of that, I made the... Uh, Star Trek Five joke of what does God need with a starship, but change that with what does a mini plot need with a motor? Because why the fuck does a mini plot need a motor? It's supposed to be just a model kit that you yourself can manually roll around, or you yourself just assemble and put on display. It's not meant to be like the deluxe damn toy. So that means literally that if they were to make goddamn what is it uh what is it what die what is it die Mugen the turtle you know tore the the shuttle zord does that mean they're gonna put lights and sounds in it? And have the roar of Angulus. Like, <laughs> like is that going to happen? Like, when they make, when they make like, say, Super Mini Pla, Super Train Megazord, is it just going to have, like, fucking chrome, chrome plating? When they make freaking Super Mini Pla Revolver Mammoth, is it going to actually be able to shoot Mini Pla kind of curry balls if they ever go that far? Who knows? I don't know. Only the Shadow knows, we Ex- Exactly. So I guess I got to go ask Adam... No, not Ad- Alec Baldwin. <laughs> Why Ad- Adam Baldwin Superman? <laughs> not the Shadow. Alec Baldwin is the Shadow. That's right. He is the Shadow. He is the Shadow. The Shadow. And as far as the, Ultra- the Ultraman gear, uh, I I I don't know because I I don't re- I didn't really follow these two series because you know Dinah and Zero are far superior. It's weird because like you were still in the <laughs> Fil- Philippines at what early '90s, so the Gaia, Tiga, and Dinah weren't even out yet, right? Oh, I don't think so. So, yeah, you wouldn't even have any, like, connection to any of the Heisei trilogy in general, correct? Mm, like, you barely like, have no connection with them. Eat on Saturdays on, uh, you know, that terrible network. Are you talking about the Fox Box with Tiga? That is correct. <laughs> yeah. Because I was going to say, you had the Showa era and the early, early Heisei stuff, like the Seven probably specials, but you didn't have the, the trilogy that I grew up with, technically, when I was torrenting shit in the early 2000s. Yeah, no. Okay, so yeah, no, like, the thing is, it, it's good to have these things for a collector, like me, because they're, each of those items individually are more than this set, and they have less features and are prone to breaking easily. I should know, I recently got one, and it came with one working LED light and no sounds. <laughs> and it was, like, cheap as fuck, and the thing was, it was in a lot, and allegedly, like, no one knew if it was working, but, like... I got just one light working in it, so I got to replace the light bulb, but I can't replace the sounds. Thanks. Yeah. So, I am totally looking forward to this. Also, shockingly enough, this is going into our actual trailer news and towards our other Toku news. So, we're going to be talking about, like, our first trailer, the Samu dub of Garo Vanishing Line. Now, we've kind of talked about Vanishing Line being announced on previous episodes, me and Mucha. And the thing is, having a Samu dub from Funimation is probably... One of the more interesting things, because I don't recall the original Garo animes, the first two, getting a Simu dub. I remember the dub came later, so I see that the Garo anime is very popular in North America. And that probably led to how Kraken got the release of the series on Blu-ray, the actual Toku series. And the fact that they're doing a Simu dub of this show just means that the hype is real for the third season. I mean, I'm already hooked on the third season, and I have yet to even watch it yet. All I know is I like it, I like the art style, I like the take on it being a weird kind of next Sunday AD kind of like in the near future element, and I like the fact that Zaraba becomes a goddamn motorcycle. So at this time, I don't think the cast has been announced yet because I think the Simu dub is set to be like on a, at least a week or two delay of when, you know, the actual episodes come out. So they'll still be subbed on Funimation, but then I think the dub will follow like the week after, you know, new episodes air. 
if I recall correctly, I think that's how their Simu dubs work. I don't think they actually dub it the day of its release. But uh, what's your thoughts on that product, though, that the third Garo anime has a Simu dub? That's interesting, because I haven't even followed the anime, so I'm kind of not, I'm way behind. So, I don't know, you might have to enlighten me, we might have to have, to, have, to have a Garo viewing at some point. Eventually we are going to have a Garo viewing, whether it be the Toku or the actual anime, who knows. <laughs> Whatever comes first. Then we're going to talk about Pacific Rim, because technically it's Toku and it's Kaiju, because, you know, Guillermo del Toro loves monsters. So... In the Pacific Rim sequel, Uprising is set to be probably, what, 10, maybe 15 years after the events of the first movie that we saw. In this version, everything seems to be a little bit more super robot-y, very more anime-like, very more colorful, a lot more comedic, witty, family-friendly banter. Like, it really feels like this one's trying to be G when it's obviously PG-13, and there's a part where it literally gets kind of Power Rangers-y, where you see, like, four Jaegers against freaking one giant freaking kaiju. So, what what, what was your thoughts on the trailer? I, can I spoil something? Yeah, spoil it. John Boyega's character is the goddamn Marshall's kid. If you look at him closely, he's got, he's rocking the mustache, the mustache, the fact that he gets to, he keeps his British accent... And he, uh, from the looks of it, he gets he gets a fantastic speech near the near the climax of the goddamn movie. What do you think, Wheels? Am I correct? Are like, I ready? feel like he has to be, but at the same time, they never acknowledged if he had a family. I think in the first one, so I think this one's just gonna be easy for them to say, "Oh, since we never acknowledged it, you never knew." Kind of BS, because it, it's kind of hinted that he has to be related to him somehow or idolized him, like great, like either. I, I actually they're related. Just the fact well, that yeah. he's the marshal. Yeah. I, I do say, like, I gotta say I like the designs of the new Jaegers, like, I like the streamline, but I, I just get this really weird vibe from it being so anime-like. I'm just sitting here like, I didn't really like the first one, and now the second one's just, oh, like, super ridiculous. Oh, but, for all it's kaiju. I know, it's, it's, it's getting really ridiculous, because there's a f- fusing kaiju that everyone's calling it the, go- everyone's calling it the Go Lion or the Voltron kaiju. Wait, what? Yeah, everyone's trying to call this kaiju Voltron on on fan forums because it takes five kaiju to make this this kaiju allegedly well, that they fight funny. at the end of the trailer. We find that the Pacific Rim robots are is actually fucking Dairuger, okay? We call it now. That would be that <laughs> would be fan it. fan fucking tastic. I I would pay to see that. Uh, and for the record, when I saw them whip out their weapons near the end of that trailer, I was hoping the new Gypsy date, the Gypsy, is it Gypsy Avenger? Gypsy date, was it? Gypsy Avenger. Gypsy Avenger would combine its two chainsaw things, it has a giant buster sword chainsaw thing. That, that, that's, that's wishing for, for, for too much, Project. Because, like, when it came out on both arms, I was like, oh, shit, it's getting, getting Guyver-esque Wolverine-like up in this bitch. I'm telling you, those things, those chainsaw blades will combine the giant buster saw with them sword. But did you That'd notice be... that they kind of have, like, a Mobile Suit Gundam, like, Exia GN sword kind of vibe going there? Like, the blades actually glow, like, at the at the edge of the blades? That is correct. It, is, it, wheels, it has a heat rod. It has a heat, what's it called? Like, a fucking Epion, the heat rod. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, it has, like, like a heat rod mixed with, like, the GN, GN saber from Double O. I'm sitting there like, that's like a heat rod mixed. I'm like, oh my god, he's... He's robbing more from Gundam. Next, next, we're gonna find out Legendary Pictures and Guillermo del Toro are gonna make the One Year War. Oh, Gundam wings, sir. That's what's first because they want to they want to appeal to the casuals first. No, Hollywood's actually been trying to do the original 0079. They they were like they they literally are like we're gonna do 0079, and then Warner Brothers was like one time going no we'll just go straight to wing, and everyone was like no because Tomino will come in here and try to kill all of us. <sighs> yep. Well, yeah, the trailer's interesting. Yeah, it does look interesting. It just it's very different from the first movie, drastically different. Yeah, the acting's probably way better. Like, you know what, you know what one thing I can say about this movie? It kind of tells like a story of like the first movie even though there's a prologue to set up the universe. The first movie itself is really the real prologue leading to like the real story which is supposed to be this weird colorful happy go lucky crazy adventure kind of like anime like story so like everything we saw in the first 20 minutes of the first film and the actual film itself was just the prologue to get to this series of films which is going to be the real franchise builder you know 
Like, why do I have a feeling it's written like that, kind of, almost, where it's like, the next film is going to take place almost like a 10-year gap after this film, and then that film's going to have, like, like immediate, like, sequel, where it takes place within the next three years, or something vice versa, like, some bullshit like that. Like, I feel like it's supposed to, like, tell, like, a weird generational story, almost. No, again, we'll see how it plays out. So far, I'm interested, but not, you know... I don't, like, I want, I feel like I want to be interested because it does a lot more... But at the same time, I don't want to be interested because it's fucking Pacific Rim. All right, next up, let's talk about some Power Rangers stuff. Because, first off, at New York Comic Con, we got some inklings of what's going to be uh, part of the Super Ninja Steel toy line. The Geki Tatsu Dayo Megazord, or Mecha as you want to call it, from Ninja, is going to be called the Ninja Steel Blaze Megazord. Which made me and Visible Ninja start making 420 jokes left and right when we saw the Geki Tatsu Dayo being announced as the Ninja Steel Blaze Megazord. There's also going to be like two new weapons, one for the Mega Mode, which looks like a lion cannon, and then the other one that looks kind of like a weird like saber of some sort, which I still have yet to find out what the name is. In addition, we know that the Legacy Line Dino Megazord uh, legacy figures of Tyrannosaurus and Sabretooth Tiger should be ready for late winter, early early spring uh, assortment waves. So we might be seeing them in stores for the holiday season or early on 2018. In addition, they did confirm this rumor that I've heard for ages that they were going to make new flip heads. However, they're not brand new molds. They're going to be a limited, straight-on reprint like vintage series Star Wars figures where the flip heads will be in their original packaging showing the original box with small disclaimer saying this is a repackage do not expect these other products to be reissued so they're only allegedly at this time reissuing the original six flip heads and it's still pending if we're going to get Tommy Fliphead, Aisha Fliphead, Rocky and or Adam Fliphead so as for the Ninja Steel toys and the legacy figures what, what What's your thoughts on that? Legacy, you know, Megazord figurines as well as actual reprinted Flipheads project. I just want the Flipheads because I used to have them as a kid. Uh, as far as the... I don't really follow the Legacy line because, like, I, I'm, a, I'm a figure arts guy. You know this. But we'll never get Sentai figure arts after that, that disaster that was... What was it? Technically, it was, called... it, was keep... it, was yeah, sort of, it, it was sort of a Kiba Ranger's fault. And everyone's in denial. Every, a lot of people I talk to are in denial. Because, uh, think about it, we haven't seen a Sentai figure art since fucking freaking Koryuger, right? Uh, like, the last Sentai figure arts to come out was Koryuger and the Sun Vulcan ones, if I recall. And that was, and that's it, they haven't heard anything since. Yeah, like, pretty much, uh, Akiba Ranger started the whole blend of, hey, we're gonna make a shit ton of Sentai figure arts. Then the Sentai figure arts didn't do good and bombed. And then they tried again with Koryuger and Sun Vulcan. And Sun Vulcan took pretty well. Cute. Uh, Koyuger did okay, didn't do too great, and then it really didn't pick up. A, they had to sell them as a set, so they, they assumed it would, people would buy them immediately, but no, people yeah. wanted them. So yeah, were, people right. wanted to buy them. Like, people did want the Koyugers, but they did not want to be forced to buy, like, blue and green as a set for 8,000 yen. They didn't want to be forced to buy black and pink as a set, and they were very discouraged that the additional rangers, like, violet both violets, both cyans, both, uh, what is it, graphite or gray and, uh, silver were not accessible for purchase. Well, they didn't even make them. No, they didn't make them. They, there wasn't even a prototype, unlike the Decker Ranger swap modes. Yeah, that would, that would have been awesome if they got Decker Rangers. Or, or, or the Rio and Melee figure arts. Or all the Bokenger figure arts. Or all the freaking other Shinkenger figure arts they were supposed to make. Wheels, come on, come on now. We're not going to get, no one's going to get all the Bokenger. We're only going to get five of the six Bokengers, you know this, right? I know, that's the sad part, because people in North America wouldn't buy the black Bokenger because of, you know, Operation Overdrive Black being a thief. But nevertheless, you know, flip heads are allegedly coming back. We we know it's the original six thus far, which means all I got to do is buy a new black and black and blue and I'll finally have a power cannon. To, to display with my flip heads. Actually, I think which flip heads did I have? Didn't, didn't they have one, though? Is it a Green Ranger or White Ranger? Yeah, but White Ranger didn't come out till like, Season 3 alongside Aisha, Adam, and Rocky. Yeah, no, I got the... I, got, I, got, I had all of them, so it was great. Now, here's a funny thing. 
They never made a Catherine one, even though she was during the MMPR series. She never got a flip head. That sucks. I think she was going to. Like, there was a cancelled prototype for her. That's too bad. Oh my god, they should have made that a Power Morpher Con exclusive. They could, but we already know that the Power Morpher Con for, what is it, 2018, is most likely going to be a legacy Lord Draken from Boom Studios comics. Oh yeah, you're right, because he's a thing now. Yeah, like, they're really trying to hype Lord Draken as a, as, a, as a thing. I think it's kind of dumb. It, it, got, it got dumb real fast. The hype died real fast. Because is, is he supposed to be the source of the White Ranger's powers? Like, the reason why? The, Saba's actually an alternate reality, what's it called? Is that like, what it, is? it was <laughs> like, it was like some ludicrous story where, like, Tommy never turned good in this alternate dimension and killed... So- and kill, killed, like, Jason before he could be given the White Ranger powers to f- combat the Green Ranger. Yep. And then he took the powers and fused them to make himself into Lord Draken. That led to the Power Rangers of the real universe going to that universe and having to stop him. Thus, at, at the same time, Sama and the White Ranger powers will go to the fucking regular universe. That's yeah, right. I, I believe that's how the, the canon was established, but I never read all of the... The comics I being over yet. It's not over yet. Yeah, I know. And, and now they're making a new series called Power Rangers 1969, where a Indian woman is the Red Ranger, a male <laughs> is the is what, Pink Ranger, and then he a, what? He is the reporter they meet in the, mo- the most current episode, uh, more, most current issue of the book. Yeah, and then actually, he and, tells that she, she she meets them in front of the goddamn command center and says, uh, "How did you know where we are? We are." Well, duh! I used to be the red. I used to be Zordon's red ranger, and I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah. And then there's gonna be what is it? A chick who is the black ranger. So the female black ranger, a pink, uh, a male pink ranger. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, blue is still. Blue is a black guy, I think, and yellow, yellow is. Nerd. Yeah, it's confusing. I got, I gotta go look at it again, but it's it's hey, really hey. interesting. It's not a mini series. It's actually a uh, what's it called? The uh, fucking storyline. Uh, is it going to be a comic, or is it going to be an actual thing? I thought it's it was actually going to be a co- comic or some kind of storyline. It was just recently announced, though, at New York Comic Con, uh, as, as we are t- talking I have, about I have this. a subscription list on my comic book store. That's Tasmanian Comics and East Hastings, Burnaby, BC. Or is it Vancouver? Whatever. Shameless plug. <laughs> Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Hey, man. The owner there is fucking... He's a nice dude ever, so yeah. He, he's got me covered when it comes to my comic book needs. Plus, he's gonna get me Darede- another Daredevil figure. Yeah. So, but, but like as we were saying, the Defenders though, comes up. As we're saying though, yeah, uh, it would be cool make a Catherine, you know, one eventually, since you know she's still in the first three seasons of the MMPR suits. So that means she deserves a flip head, even though she did get a flip head in Zio, but it was rare to find those figures. Good luck, yeah. Good yeah. Luck fighting. And and the last bit of like Power Rangers news we have to talk about is that Super Ninja Steel trailer. That reveals the return of frickin' Sledge, who is accompanied by Arake no Kat- Kata. Uh, that is the suit for the one of the female generals in Ninja, who we'll see in the second half. As well as, there's a silhouette of another suit following Sledge. And it looks like a Q-liner uh, villain mecha from Tokyuger. So if you know what I'm talking about, those are like supposedly going to be working for Sledge in the return of Ninja Steel. And the thing is... How is Sledge even alive if we saw him get burnt up in the sun? We don't know. It's crazy. It's cool. I'm not mad. I think it's going to be funny and fun as all hell, even though I know a lot of the fandoms actually downright pissed off or just shocked in general and don't know what to make of this. So, Project, I know when I told you about this, you were like, yeah, you heard about it through social media, but you actually did not see how they revealed it in the trailer, so then I showed you the trailer. And, like, what's your thoughts? Do you think they blew their load a little too soon? Yeah, they kind of did. Load. They should have. Show, they should have done it during their because they usually do a mid-season hiatus kind of thing, right? Like pretty much what's going to end up happening is once the season ends, like in a couple of weeks, that season won't air till like February or March of next year. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's weird. Although I, I called it now, man. He's fucking. He's the big bad for at least a couple more seasons. But how do you think they're going to explain his survive, survival? He is, a, he is a machine. So maybe his machine part survived, and then they just cloned his physical body. Like they did Frieza in Dragon Ball. <laughs> oh, God. Use the Dragon Ball super analogy. <laughs> Somehow they cloned him. Frieza. Well, free. well, well, remember, that's how I explained it when he came back. So yeah, the Resurrection of F, yeah. Yeah, and that's not all the news we have when it comes to trailers. We have one final trailer, and it was for the 
Kamen Rider Heisei Generations Final, which is actually the Kamen Rider Tyson or the Kamen Rider Winter, you know, movie war for this year. It's going to premiere on December 9th. And the thing about it is it features the return of Shun Nishishima, who is Takuru, Takuru Tenkuji, who is Kamen Rider Ghost, Gaku Sano as Kota Kazuraba, Kamen Rider Gaim, Sota Fukushi, you know, Ichigo Kurosaki, Gentaro Kisaragi, Kamen Rider 4s, Shu Watanabe, Eji Hino, Kamen Rider O's, and Ryosuke Mura, Ankh. So, yeah, that's the confirmed returns for this movie thus far. There are other returns showing up and being hinted at through, you know, current tweets and blog updates, but we don't oh, know the full return cast listings at this time. So, Prada, what was your thoughts on this trailer and the returns? One prediction. Double will be back. We get Cyclone Cyclone now. Watch. Everyone's begging for them to be in this film. I am just wondering if, if anything, will um, Drive be in this? Because he's currently one of the only writers in the recent years to not be announced. And I want Wizard back. But I'm like, what What if he's busy he's still busy filming? Yeah, <laughs> season, season two of, of Good Morning Call. So, sir, it's season three of Kamen Rider Wizard. Shh. People don't understand. <laughs> but we'll make and them understand. Then if they don't know, they should go. <laughs> God, get out of here, John Laurinaitis. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. You're bad. Stop that. Evil. <laughs> evil. What? Everything is evil. Oh, God. No. No. Tranquilo Hasena. Tranquilo Hasena. Wheels. This is, is evil. Everything, Everything is evil. <laughs> oh god, insert Kenny Omega okay. gif. You better not travel into this darkness. What? <laughs> uh, <laughs> pro wrestling. Most of wrestlers, so I can't really make fun of them as much as I do. Oh Jesus Christ. But yeah, no. What, what, like full thoughts though on on the actual announced you know, returning actors. Like, did you think that freaking, of all people, Forze was going to be back? I thought he'd be busy fighting Hollows. But now I'm just waiting for number one to hit when he shows up. Just hear... I'm like, I'm just waiting. Here's the real question. How the fuck did he get his driver back? (laughs) Here's a question. Why the fuck does, out of nowhere, Takeru have different hair? Uh, it's called... Wait, what? Takeru, you know, uh, Ghost, Ghost has a completely different hairstyle in this ser- in the movie. Wheels, come on now, nothing wrong with changing your hairstyle. I'm doing that thing. On, I'm doing that on Wednesday. I can have blonde hair by the, for all you know. Checks Instagram. Project, you do have blonde hair. You're freaking Okada. Stop it. Okay, that is a lie. Let me go. Hide, let me go put my coat away. I mean, not that you're lying. No. See, he confirms it. I am not that. He man. is Okada. He he is Rainmaker Okada in disguise. Just posing as an online right. reviewer called Project RDM. Anyway, back to Toku. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm I'm actually happy people are coming back. It's not just voices coming back, which is good, because <laughs> we usually get the best we get these days is just one or two people coming back and then voices. So the more the more the merrier. Now, if this is you know supposed to be like you know Hey Sai finale, like I'm hoping they can pull in like other actors. Like I know we're not getting a Joe Odagiri no matter how hard I wish and how hard I try. We're never we'll, ever getting that. The best we'll get with him is a voiceover. Like, if anything, like, I believe we would get, you know, Agito back. I believe we would get, like, you know, G3 back. I believe we could get, like, Gills back. Anyone in, like, Ryuki back. Freaking, freaking at this point, I could see, like, freaking them almost pulling, like, something, like a miracle out of their ass and getting, like, Hibiki back. But I don't see them getting Deno uh, I don't see them getting Kabuto, nor do I see them getting freaking Kuga. Like, those are the guys I don't expect them to be bringing back anytime soon. Uh, I think Hiro Mizushima is expensive. I don't know if he'll actually come back for that. I think he's too busy to eat with his kids. Talking about Kabuto, right? Yep. Well, no, don't forget, what is it? His agency won't let him go back, supposedly, even though he retired from acting. Allegedly, but he would come back to... Like, he's recently teasing like it by saying, oh, his kids love Kabuto, which makes me wonder, is he actually coming back? Because there is talks of a battle of 
had a legacy versus Kabuto in the film. So does that mean it's just the suit, or is it actually fucking him? I don't know. Well, Deno can't come back even though he wants to because his guy they, they want to, they don't want to. Yeah, like, his agency doesn't doesn't want him to go back for a cheaper f- price. They're like, oh, he big time money now. You you can't afford him. Ha ha ha. Kind of dumb. It is dumb. It's always dumb. But that's the typical thing about what is it? Japanese agencies being like ludicrous and like radical and crazy. They're basically like fucking gangsters if you think about it. Like it's like highway robbery. It's pretty much highway robbery. Like they, the Wild Wild West, as far as agencies, if you're a member of a group, you're kind of screwed. Because yeah, you're kind of really screwed. If you get a crappy group, think, look what happened to Go Say Pink. Yeah, she got screwed because, you know, they were dealing drugs. I bet you five bucks she got fucking set up. Hey, Wills, can we go on a short break so I can take my dogs out? Oh, yeah. All right, so thank you very much, everyone, for being in the chat rooms for a long time. And this will be the uh, probably, uh, you know... <laughs> Not the last, I guess, but the uh, a very important you know, demonstration uh, for the DX Audio Blood Trap, but because it comes with the two special q tamas So I'd like to try that. And first, uh, Audio q tama Okay. And q kyoku q right? It was, yes. You know, it was a Q-Kyo q tama all right, and we took a short little break. Project had to go walk the dogs, and I went to get a thing to drink, you know, a little mixer, a little bit of uh, soda, and, and one of my favorite liquors out of my, you know, liquor cabinet. But we're back now, and we are going to be talking about freaking toys and collecting for our main discussion topic. Since, you know, we already talked about our thoughts on all the news, all the toys, all the New York Comic Con news and trailers thus far. So, this discussion is going to literally be probably like what we started with what was hard for us to collect what we like to collect now and stuff that we're still trying to obtain or reobtain seeing if we lost it due to being able to having to move somewhere or had to sell it someone stole it or you just you know straight up lost it like you took it someplace and left it there you know stuff like that and probably since project is the older of us since he is probably like eight years my senior even though he tries to change the age difference vastly from time to time and regularly uh let's ask project like what was his first thing he ever remembers getting like one of his first ever sentai or rider toys i'm actually 12 years your senior no you're not come on now you're two years younger than kenny omega which makes you born in 85 i am not two years younger than kenny omega I am way older. I'm, I'm several years older than he is. I just look young, like a time lord. Okay, you can, you can lie to me, but you can't lie to yourself. Silly wheels. You're crazy. Anyways, let's see. What do I remember? Huh. I've forgotten more than you'll ever learn about token wheels. I'm sorry. All right. The one mecha I remember owning that probably... Remember the Turbo, the turbo Rangers? Not, 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 not... No, I know not Power Rangers. Tur- I know the Turbo Rangers with their Griffin constellation. But they're actually powered by magical cars. Like, yes. It's a Griffin constellation, but it's magic cars from, from uh, with a constellation of vehicles. Yes, yes, I, I oh. do know of it. I have the Mecha and the action figures for that. The, that I remember me. those figures like were actually hotcakes at one point back in the day. Like The actual small figurines were very oh, they, rare. They're talking about like, the six inches. They even have 12-inch figures. Oh, I do not know about those. Wait, 12 No, no, they have the 6-inch figures. Yeah, no, they're like little ones that, like, I think came with vehicles or whatever. I I, I don't really know. I've seen photos, like, either through CC Lemon or, you know, eBay auctions and Yahoo Japan auctions. It's very, very interesting. So, like, that was, like, your first stuff was actually Turbo Ranger, you're saying? I can remember. I, like, I, I, I know you once told me you at least have Mask Man stuff, and I always forget, did Mask Man come before Turbo Ranger or after Turbo Ranger? Well, let's go Google it. Let's, let's, let's go double check. 89, so that's the first thing you actually remember, but you did get Mask Man stuff, I'm guessing, later on, or it was still in stores Man, near you. Mask Man, Live Man, Five Man, Bio, uh, Bio Man... Uh, what well, else the thing is, in the Philippines, though, like, Bio Man was heavily syndicated, right? Oh, Bio Man was the shit, dude. Yeah, like, when what? it aired in, in in the Philippines, it aired, like, what, five to eight years later after it originally aired in Japan, but it was, it like, was, a huge commercial success. It was dubbed. It was what? dubbed. 
Yeah, and it was a huge commercial success. So, like, the, I, I know it's been, like, what is it, simulcast and, do, uh, you know, syndicated for years, I know. It's, like, one of the biggest commodities there. Let's see, a little, what, let's see, I remember would be, so I remember Dynamite, so it's, I started with Dynaman. Actually, no, I, I did Bioman first, it was a thing back called back then. Then I, I then I went backwards with Dynaman, then there was Change Man, Flash, I, I think I got, the, I got through all of them. So pretty much you got, like, almost everything from, like, the 80s, most likely, but you just remember Turbo as, like, probably your significant first one that you can actually recall. I like the I, I like the vehicle mecha. Plus, it rolled on we. Its its feet were sports car like dune buggies and sports cars. So it was great. yeah, it had like the die Ruger effect to its like legs. I I, yeah. I know it was great. It just rolled on its own. It was fantastic. Like it's funny too, because like I've never really been uh, a fan really of the Turbo Rangers mecha. Like what is it, Turbo Robo? Like I found it kind of weird. Like I like their suits, but I thought their mecha was kind of too die Rugery for me. But didn't they come before Dairuger? No, Dairuger seeing... came before them because Dairuger was the early to mid '80s, and this was like the late oh, '80s because Go Lion and them were already like '82 and '83. That's correct. And they had a Jet Mecha too. I forgot what it was and, called. And, and here's the funny thing: they're all owned by Toei. Yeah, yeah. A little ironic, don't you think? That you know, freaking Toei borrows ideas from the Super Robot animes. Yeah, because their their main because their main body is actually if like it's Optimus Prime. Uh, one of the the arms are basically it's a minivan, and the two legs are a jeep and a buggy, and then the actual main form of the like the head is a, a fucking sports car. Yeah, it, it's kind of radical and crazy. It's 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 ludicrous, you know. It's it's interesting. I've always found it very, you know, crazy. Cause like the funny thing is is like since you lived in the Philippines, you had like you know. A, a pleather of Sentai and Rider stuff, whereas me, I had to deal with the American adaptation. And the funny thing was, my first Megazord I intended to like want for a Christmas gift was the you know limited Thunder Assault Team and the Red Dragon Thunder Zord gift set for the Thunder Megazord in North America. But I never got that. Like my first actual like Megazord stuff was getting like Serpent Terra, the actual uh, Ninja Megazord, the Falcon Zord. And the power cannon, you know, like the actual power... No, not the power cannon, that was the dragon cannon from Die Ranger. But, you know, when you put the... What is it? The ancient legendary weapons from the Jew Rangers together to make the howling cannon. Like, those mm-hmm. were my first toys aside from the flip heads. Like, those were the only things I got. But I got them, like, in such a weird out-of-order thing since, like, the first three years of, like, I would say Mighty Morphin were always kind of shelf-warming until they were getting ready to do the transition to Season 3 into Zeo, a lot of that stuff became very scarce. Like, that was my first ever, like, getting my hands on those toys. And what's funny about it is, the only other products that I got at the time, other than Power Rangers, was Saban's Mask Rider. I didn't buy any VR Troopers toys. I didn't like VR Troopers whatsoever, as, as for the actual show. But I was always drawn to the Metal Hero suits. And I was like, man, these these suits are awesome, but I don't like this show, and I don't like this cast. But yet I liked Mask Rider, which is the more hated Saban adaptation. I liked Power Rangers, and then I eventually liked Beetleborgs. But, like, my first stuff was literally a lot of the Season 3 and whatever was Season 1 stuff that they released during the Season 2 toy line. Because if you recall, with Power Rangers... A lot of the toys didn't come out until Season 1 concluded in North America. Like, all the Season 1 related toys didn't come out till like, they were sort of in the midway point of the Jew 2 footage. <laughs> and that's when, like, all of those toys for Season 1, like the automorphing flip heads, the actual power cannon came out. I think the original toy line was, like, the action gimmick 8-inch figures, the vinyl villains, the Megazords, and the Power Morpher. I think those were the only things released. And then they made the automorphs. Then they made the other figures. Then they made, you know, the Thunder Zords, the weapons. And then, you know, they had to go to Season 3 to Turbo. And I think that was kind of the crazier stuff, you know, with the, the transition. So, like, did you have any Kamen Rider stuff, though, while living in the Philippines? No, I was, I was mostly a Sentai guy. Then I got so, switched back to went black, and then it back, went backwards. So Although I did see the other ones, though. So, like, eventually before you did come to America, you did get into Rider eventually. Yeah. And then, and then you got into Rider again via Kabuto in 2006, where during that, in, like, in-between time from coming to the Philippines to America, I would say to Canada, North America, 
you then got into Power Rangers, fell out of Power Rangers, got back into Toku because of Kabuto. Like I, mm-hmm. like, because I, I know we talked about it in their very first episode, but I always kind of get confused. So, like, Sentai didn't bring you back in. It was actually Kabuto that then led you back to Sentai. Uh, no. So here's how here's how this works. Uh, before I left to go to North America, I was a Sentai guy mainly, but I was I Black and Black RX was a big deal back home. So I was that's how I got how I got introduced to Kamen Rider. When I left, I got off of it after the whole... Uh, but I was still into Power Rangers and whatnot, but I wasn't into Sentai. So for a couple of years, I was not into it. Then I got back into it in 2006. Yes, that is correct, with Kabuto. Kabuto and Bokenger got you back into, like, Sentai. No, just okay, just Kabuto. Just Kabuto. Just Kabuto, okay. And then I got back into Sentai... What was after Bokenger? Geki Ranger. No, wait, see, Bokenger. What was, what was before Bokenger? Magi Ranger. Deca Ranger was before that? Yes. It might have been decoration that got me back into Sentai, but I'm pretty sure I just, I just, I, I it just basically, Kabuto got me back into Toku. All right. Just go with that. All right, so that's what happened, but when you were into Power Rangers, when you first got to America, you did have some of the Power Ranger stuff too, right? Uh, before I left, I had the, remember those 12-inch uh, Mighty Morphin action figures? Yes, those were the ones that I was talking about, like the weird 8-inch to 12-inch gimmick figures that... I wasn't really uh, the twelve into. Page gimmick figures, and then when you, um, uh, they had the the, the the crappy thing about them is they had the fucking power coins in the chest. Remember that? Yeah, like I remember that, and I here's the funny thing: I liked that they had the the marks on the figures, even though it wasn't you know shit screen accurate. I liked it because I thought it helped stand out which ranger was which to uh, aside from their helmet, and that was one thing that I actually liked about the uh, movie suits was that the movie suits had the big coins in their chest that looked really cool. But I can honestly, it didn't make sense with the actual, you know, base expandex ones. I can honestly say, it with in full honesty, as far as Power Rangers, I probably, I'm pretty sure I had the biggest collection. I could, probably, as far as I knew, um, I had the 12 inches, the 12 inch, the 12, the eight 12 inch figures, all six, sorry, seven, because they came, the White Ranger came as well. All the flip heads, uh, the mech, uh, the, I got the reg, the Megazord, Titanus, the Dragon Zord, along with. I believe I have all, I had all the Thunderzords. All of them. So, oh, you, you, you stopped buying, like, Sentai slash Power Ranger toys, what, like, probably by Zeo? Or... No, when I, I, I stopped, because I, I, got, got, I got off of it, right? Oh, so you got out of it. You were still watching Power Rangers in, Power Rangers and Sentai in Philippines, but then you got off of it when you moved here. Yep. Okay, well, because because that was the thing I mean, that kind of made it confusing for me. Like, because I know you stopped collecting, but you sort of watched it. I, I was confused by that. I would say, man, when the, when the Power Rangers came, because remember, um, uh, sometimes they fill, they do, they do movie premieres for like Amer- American movies in the Asia first. Yeah, in Asia but, first, yes. I I saw the Power Rangers movie when it came out in the film in Asia first. It was a big deal, major premiere, whole shebang. Although none of the actors showed up, as far as I know. <laughs> so I was there for that. Watched it in theaters. It's great. Um, I think they even had the Ninja Megazord. Never got. Yeah, they had the Ninja Megazord too. Because the funny thing is, is like, for me, I I was collecting all the way up until right about Wild Force when it came to gl- collecting, like, Deluxe Mecha. And then I started really falling out of it real hard during, like, Ninja Storm through Dino Thunder. Like, I had maybe some of the figures, maybe some one, one or two of the Zords. But then, like, it was, like, kind of in SPD. I, w- I cut Cold Turkey came back during Mystic Force very briefly for t- toy collecting, cut, cu- cut almost cold turkey in Operation Overdrive. Like, I bought maybe, like, three figures in Operation Overdrive, which was, like, the least out of all the Disney seasons at that time. And then I got most of my Geki Ranger slash, you know, uh, Jungle Fury stuff on super clearance. And then RPM, I actually bought stuff at retail because I didn't watch it. I wasn't getting it for RPM, even though, like, in a sense, I was endorsing the RPM show because I was buying its products. I was doing it because I wanted figures of the Go-Ongers because I really loved Go-Onger. Because <laughs> I had already gotten really into Sentai around, like, when I found out, you know, Sentai th- through Gal Ranger. And then I was actually watching it a lot of Toku from, like... Magi Ranger to now, but I was really like I kind of got at the end of Magi Ranger when Bokenger was airing, so it was really Bokenger to now. So mm-hmm. a lot of my my like sent like Power Ranger toys was because of that, and I didn't really get into really hardcore collecting Toku toys until like late 2008, early 2009, because like it was like the year before the year the year or so before I met you. Like it was probably like when I first met like Sound Out Darkon. 
and Shuken Shinobi, like those guys, and anyone at the CS Toys show first, was like around the time I really started buying off of places like Ami Ami, Hobby Link Japan, um, CS Toys. And it was all all through like really CS Toys where I started really, really like buying a lot of like the characters and 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 shows I had missed out on, not because, you know, I ha- didn't watch them when they were airing. I just didn't know where was a proper channel to buy because in the early 2000s, eBay was still, like, kind of skeptical to buy Toku toys from. Specifically, like, if I was to buy, say, Ryuki stuff, I could end up getting, like, the Korean stuff or terrible bootleg shit. And you can never know right away. Because, like, I remember the first time I saw some of the Korean products... I didn't know if they were, like, going to be straight up, like, the same sounds or if they were the toys with just replacing, like, you know, phrases in Japanese to Korean. So, like, I didn't get, like, when I saw, I think, what was it, one of the Fies, like, the Fies gear, I thought it was going to say, like, stand by, but instead of saying stand by, I thought it was going to say, like, actually, but like, in Korea, like, in the Korean dialect of it, saying, not, like, stand by with a Korean accent, I thought it was literally gonna say stand by in Korean. So I didn't buy it. And that's literally what happened. I think I think that was, like, one of the hardest things, was, like, not knowing about stores at the time. And, like, growing up, I think I liked really getting figures and really good mechas, whereas nowadays I'm more of the figure guy. Because you're like that, too, where you buy mostly only figure arts and roleplay, play. And I buy only mini pla in figure arts normally. I I only buy figure arts mostly. I'll get role play depending on who it is. Uh, I have to. And like I think I only get like one role play normally a season. Like it's rare for me to get like all of the items or at least all of the main henshin gear. Like say in uh, Gaim, I got the Sengoku driver and the and the uh, Genesis driver. I didn't get all the gear like the gear to become you know the final form of Gaim, but I have like you know both the actual belts, and I have quite a few of the deluxe lock seeds and face plates. So like I did go out and get like the main, almost the main shit. Uh, Koyujer, I got the Gabu revolver. I got the what is it? The Gabu caliber. I got the Giga Gabu revolver, and I got the freaking uh, Mini Tira Carnival. And so I got all of those. Uh, Go Kyger, I only got the Mo Birates and, like, maybe 80 keys. Freaking shit, I just realized I got the entire... It, it took me 10, year, 10 or 15 years, but I got all the Henshin devices from probably, like, Power Rangers in Space and some of the other early Saban stuff that I skipped. Because I, when I was a kid, I didn't always buy the Henshin devices. I sometimes just bought the weapons and not the morphers. For example, like Zeo, I don't own an actual Zeonizer. I own the King Brace that was marketed in the Zeo toy line. I don't own an actual original Zeonizer that the main five used. I just use the unused King Brace. Uh, Power Rangers Turbo, I have the actual power, the Turbo Morpher, but I don't have the auto gun to go with my freaking Turbo Navigator. Uh, I don't have the Turbo Ram. I don't have the Turbo Turbine. I don't have in, like, Lost Galaxy, I don't have the actual Galaxy Morpher. I don't have the Magnet Defender Morpher, which is the reprint of the Aura Changer. And I would love to have those, but they're very hard to come by. Um, but, like, what's some of the rare rare shit that you never got that or lost that you want to get again? Uh, everything that went missing in the Philippines is technically considered rare now. <laughs> yeah, that's actually that's actually the, the plot twist. The plot twist. Everything you used to have is now is now rare and, 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 and sought after. Pretty much, yeah. Would probably, people would probably try to rob my house and find out where I live, and I, has, I still had them. Yeah, because here, here's a good example. One of the things I never got, and it's still rare, sort of, even as of today, is, uh, what is it, Gal Isis, which is the, what is it, Icarus Megazord? Yeah. I, I never got that. I wanted it. I really wanted to have the rhino, the armadillo, and the giraffe, and the, the, the deer, and the falcon, or the phoenix. But I couldn't get the American release of it. It's better to get the actual Japanese release because it has the COD piece to allow it to become Gal Kong Striker. But I just can't ever get it because it's roughly 80 to $125. And then the shipping for it because of the gift set is probably going to take it up to another 20 bucks, 30 bucks. Because I know Soundout said one time uh, he almost bought one and the shipping was like 
remarkable for it. But then again, Sound Out used to be like super EMS guy, so like I could see it, that being one of the other issues to why it was so expensive at the time. It also it be super guys. EMS. What? Are we also pretty, depending on the, what what thing we were buying at the time. Uh I was more or less not really towards EMS unless it was like the Christmas holiday or my birthday. Like I rarely bought EMS stuff unless it was like really like, you know, more of a luxury, you know what I'm saying? I mean, like if it's like a Tamashii web exclusive, it's like the prices justifies be, it being EMS because you don't want... You oh yeah, because yeah, yeah, that, that, that happened a few times where like early on before they rose the shipping prices... Uh, there were a few figure arts that I bought with Ryder Proxy where, because it was either her doing a special limited discount or she was giving a discount to, like, her her uh, regulars or the reviewers that were also regular customers, it was, like, if, like, her discount uh, equaled out plus, like, EMS shipping made it almost, like, basic price of just getting it with Sal and her basic, you know, um, di- her basic fee, it was like, oh, hell yeah, I'll do that. Because that, that, that was the case a couple of times with certain figure arts. I think one of one of those uh, would be the blue beat and the black beat, I believe, happened. that I believe that happened. I could I could, I, I could double check, but that means I have to search through like 400 emails in my save files. And I'm not going to do that. But yeah, uh, y- you know what is funny? Here, here's another thing that I find that was rare for me as a kid. It is freaking, aside from the Icarus... I never saw the Quantum Defender, the Magna Bla- or the Magna Defender Blaster. Like I never saw Magna Defender's weapon at at, at in store or Quantum De- or the Quantum Defender. Those were two weapons I never saw at, in stores whatsoever as a kid growing up. Like those looked rare as all hell. Like I was looking all over and you could not find those SOBs. Well, good luck finding it, especially if it's the DB Defender. Uh, yeah. I mean, I already own both those items now ironically due to Darkon in some shape or form finding, you know, bids on eBay that were cheap as hell. And the, the seller actually sold it, didn't flip it again after, like, you know, the, the bidding ended. <laughs> yeah, there's been a few cases where they didn't get the price they wanted and so they, they would and they would cancel it on, on me, Darkon, and then reprice oh, it. I'm ha- that's ha- happened to me too, remember? Like, we were all keeping an eye on it. Oh yeah, that did happen, yeah. Because that's happened before, and I, I know it's really annoying when sellers do that. But, like, nowadays, sellers are kind of stuck to that, like, they can't do that bullshit. They kind of can't do that anymore. Or they choose not to because of how policies can strike back at them. Yep, because if that happens and it's notorious for that, they can always get reported, and then, boom, your your, your sales... Your, yeah, like because your... I know a person that actually won a bid with this one dealer twice, and he did it to him twice, and he contacted them. Contacted eBay. That's just terrible. Like, hey. And, and the funny thing, if I recall, it was all over the deluxe Bokendra Mecha, which is stuff I want. They're not they're not hard to get, but they're just pricey. They're hard to get at the price like it's fair, like a reasonable for the for the Yeah, buyer. like 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 if you want like if you want to get them at a reasonable pr- price, you have to get them loose. And that's where it gets a little harder to find all the parts in there either loose or in their individual boxes. But like if you wanted to get the, you know, ultimate gift set that's where you're really going to be spending a lot of the money. You the realize we're supposed to be watching the CS Toys live uh, show right now, right? Oh no, I'm still watching it. I just have it on mute. I know we're we're we're, we're actually enjoying the CS Toys alternative show while we're actually hosting our show, which is ironic because you know we're technically also sponsored by CS Toys. So, aha, it's double jeopardy. It's a friend though, so you know. Exactly. Anyway, so uh, what's other stuff like? Like, what are other items that you're looking to get one day? Because I know you and me, we, we both want to get our hands on bl- a black belt. We want we, we want a Kingstone. I, I want the laser blade. Ah, uh, yeah, yes, the Tomashi Labs laser blade would be great. I I really want one. I would love um, to see a Tomashi Labs Revel Cane. You know, if they do that, the shit's gonna get. Yeah, two versions though. One where it's fucking a lightsaber, and two the actual just regular. Yeah, cane. where where it's just the regular blade. It's funny too because I found out there actually is a deluxe Revel blade, like what is it, Revel Cane, like that oh, was sold. There was a deluxe one. Uh, a lot of people thought it was a, a myth because they never seen it like sold on uh, on secondhand, you know, stores or markets, right? And one day, just by luck, me and Darkon encountered one online, and we literally were like, "What the hell?" And the funny thing is, it was like three hundred dollars out of box. <laughs> A little steep for me. 
That's a lot of money. I've never seen something that ludicrous. It's all too steep for my taste. Indeed. Indeed. I, I, I just, it's, it's very interesting, because when it comes to toys, like, it's funny how, like, you and myself kind of started out as Sentai guys, and nowadays we're more, like, writer slash metal hero. And, like, the only stuff... I, I think the only side of me that's still Sentai is, you know, being able to watch and enjoy the series and collect the mini plot. But most we, of the time, my money goes into Common Rider or Common Rider figure arts or actual roleplay devices. We also, the, the, the thing that keeps you to Sentai isn't the figures and the collection, the collectibles. Oh, is it the waifus? <laughs> is it the waifus project? You just answered your. If you just answered the question, Wheels, there you go. It's the waifus, the... like Hammy. Because Hammy is Bay and it's a reverse harem starring Hammy. You're welcome, Wheels. You're welcome. You're, you're I welcome, Internet. That. Wait, product, then wouldn't that mean that her theme song should be Be the One from Common Rider and she's just wondering which one's going to be her rightful rightful man? Which we all know is going to end up being Yoshi Lucky! You, know, you did say what's it called that Raptor is here too, but I'm like, Wheels, come on now. She's the an main, android. The, have a best friend. Yeah. <laughs> the main protagonist needs to have a best friend, though. Exactly. She'll have her own story arc with a love with with, with a with a love interest. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Her 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 love story right now is between uh Otori and freaking Spada. Exactly, Wheels. Exactly. Because Otori is legendary. He is the legendary Surugi Otori. Uh, let's see. What's your, so Wheels out of your collection right now? What's your uh, holy grail? In my collection, I have a few holy grails, either due to age or just like you know. Sen- sentiment uh for age it is either the voltex shooter that i got for 40 bucks the actual jet garuda from you know get Jetman, and then you have items like my original you know mmpr megazords that i either got through hand-me-downs through, through a relative actually given given or purchased f- for me via my parents and then you have my you know kuga my dx kuga belt that i I got through, you know, our friend Jory, who also lives in Canada. Those are probably, like, my more real, like, holy grails. Now, I will say, though, out of the items that are sentimental as purchasing through, you know, CS Toys my first year and buying, it would probably be, like, Rising Ultimate Kuga is probably one of the few of my earliest purchases with them that is still, like, in good condition, good, uh intact because some of my early purchases were the version ones kuga agito black and black rx which i sold so i could get the version twos and the uh shinshoko sehos so i i upgraded i sold them to upgrade and i kept my rising ultimate kuga which was like my very first figure art alongside black and black rx what was your first purchase first with cs toys and what is your oldest items in your collection currently first purchase with cs toys was actually black and black rx Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Jesus Christ, Project. Did did all of us buy Black and Black RX from fucking Mr. S? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty what sure. What else did I get from Mr. S? From and, I'm, and, I'm pretty, and I'm pretty sure most of us bought our original Kamen Rider double stuff from Mr. S. Yep. Like, I think I got most of my double figure arts from him. I've got Luna, Luna Trigger, Cyclone Joker... I got I got two I think remember I used to remember I used to buy two of everything. Yeah, and so here's the funny you... thing: my first tension device, like after ages, like a long ass time, my first actual rider role play came from CS Toys, and it is from Common Rider Double, and it was the Lost Driver. And everyone knows I'm not really a big fan of Double, but it was because I really loved the aesthetic of Skull. I loved Skull Man, which he was a homage to, and I loved Eternal's design. So that's why I got got the fucking driver. No, wheels. Uh, remember when Mr. S uploads the videos of uh, the shipping, the parcels and stuff? Yes. I mean, yeah. Well, uh, if you ever if you ever saw videos of a guy who has the, who, a customer who buys two of the same figure, mm-hmm. you can pretty much tell it was me. <laughs> pretty much. That's pretty much the rule of thumb. As as we can hear, your brother Rob, I'm guessing, running around in the house. Pretty much, because uh, his late his girlfriend just left the house. Ah, uh, ah, uh, booty call. Anyways, continue on with what are your oldest items now currently in your collection? I got tons, man. Like my well, my actual my actual legit holy grail right now would be um, for figure arts, my metal heroes. So OG yeah. Gavin, Skyder, and Sharavan. But like, is there anything like old as hell in your collection currently or no? Come on, now we all know the stories of this. It all got stolen. Yeah, it all got 
all got got in the Philippines. We don't know where it is. Yeah, it either got stolen, destroyed in a flood, yeah. sold, or whatever the case. So most of your stuff is still kind of new, and if anything, like the it's more about the sentiment now of either where you bought it from or, or, or of the characters you enjoyed growing up with. Pretty much. But right now, my legit actual holy grail would be my CSM Kabuto. Yep, your Kabuto. Yeah. Because, like, for me, I, like I said, like, I think since I still have most of my collection intact, it, it's either about the sentiment and age that, that holds it as holy grails. Because, like, I'm not going to lie, like, there are so many times where my dad's, like, just flipped my MMPR Megazord stuff, but it's so hard to get those Zords back, as well as, like... I don't want to really flip my Ninja Megazord to get money or my Shogun because those were the first two that my parents actually, like, bought me, bought me. Because, like, my dad bought me the Ninja Zord for for uh, Christmas and my mom bought me the Shogun Megazord shortly after Christmas, you know, when it, like, first released. So it's like I don't want to get rid of those because those were the only Megazords I had in MMPR. <laughs> so I wouldn't want to flip those or Zeo because Zeo was, like, one of my most loved fucking seasons of power rangers growing up so i would never want to do anything so it's like always really hard and you know for someone like me who got into you know toku mostly through godzilla and ultraman i don't actually own a lot of old ultraman items or godzilla items a lot of my newer i I would say not newer but like a lot of my godzilla items that are old are all because they were treadmasters toys you know because I bought those Treadmasters toys. Like, you know the Godzilla New York playset, which is, like, my second most highest viewed video? That's one of my, like, Godzilla Holy Grails. That is, like, one of the only Holy Grails I have, I think, in my actual Godzilla collection. I don't think I've ever, ever gotten anything as rare as that Godzilla piece. Um, another rare item, like, Ultraman-related, we, we already talked about it. It's the Splendor I got. And, you know, you know the funny thing is, Project... The Splendor came in the freaking uh, lot where I still have to send you your goddamn Mega Loader. It came in that lot. Yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah, that's that's the oldest thing. Because you remember the day when I was looking at it? And I said, hey, Project, there's something funny about this. It's Splendor. And you're like, what's that? I go, it says 90. I'm like, oh, my God, it's the original. You remember that, right? When I was like, oh, my God, it's the original. And then I looked at the, and then I looked at the one from Dinah. And I'm looking at the one from Dinah. And I looked at it, and I'm like... Hold on, let me look at the date. And it was also an original Dyna henshin device. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? So I ended up getting the original Dyna and the Splendor, which ironically, the Dyna one works. The Gaia one doesn't. But nevertheless, uh, yeah, no, I, I think when it comes to toy collecting, it's very different for the both of us. I mean, as people can hear, we, we, we both got in due to Sentai. Ryder brought us kind of back, which is astonishing. And we have that weird passion for Metal Hero. Uh, our collections are vast, they're different. Mine still exists, Project barely does. <laughs> well, no, mine's, uh, it's, it's made a comeback. <laughs> well, no, it's made a comeback, but I mean, your original OG stuff is, is, is lost and may never be recovered. Lost in the Shadow Realm. Yeah. Wait, who- Project, I have a way to get, get it back, but who's gonna be the one to go through that portal? Oh, Visible Ninja. Okay, then. We'll just tie a rope to him. I don't, I don't think unless it's uh, the only way that nothing can hold is if it's made of adamantium wheels. Come on now. Oh God, it's John Cena. Run! Oh God, run! Anyways, <laughs> we're gonna wrap up the show now. We'll probably one day actually do a real more compressed version of us talking more about collections, items, and toys throughout the series, or, throughout the shows. Or, or, or check out the Hero Club Instagram where we'll upload random pictures of our collection. Yeah, actually, Let's- do check out that Instagram. Do do check it out. It, is, it uses the same username as our Twitter, as well as our Facebook page, pretty much. Like, as the quickest way to, you know, contact or tag us in anything, it's at Hero Club for Life. But you'll see that in the end credits. I've been Wheelchair21 and my co-host and f- co-founder, yada, 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 project, you know. We'll see you all next time with freaking episode 30, hopefully. And hopefully it will somewhat feature the return of the green vape. Maybe. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead, Jim. He's dead. And follow us on our non-existent Patreon at Hero Club Doesn't Exist. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we'll see you all next time. Night night, bitches. Or good day. <laughs> hey, it's Wheelchair21, and thanks again for listening to an all-new episode of Los Inglenables de Tokusatsu. If you want to hear more content or see more content from the Hero Club YouTube channel, we're going to need you to subscribe, like, 
comment with some feedback, and share this channel with a friend. We also would like you to check out our website, hero-club.com, and follow us on various social media outlets just by looking up Hero Club for Life, as well as the stores you see are where we shop. Anyways, thanks again, and we'll see you all next time.